cooking. No, look, it's good. Just need some heat in it, they'll be fine. Look this, that's idle. Hey. Trying to get some heat, some fire, some shit The Battle of Antietam remains the bloodiest single day in American history. We were in Hagerstown, Maryland for a stunt show, and one of the locals told us about this 32 mile loop that we just had to see for ourselves. We had been throwing around the idea of a traveling series on motorcycles for a while now, so we figured what the hell, let's start the series right here, right now, in Maryland. Welcome to Always Something. Uh, that was a rad canopy. That yeah. first beginning part is so sick. Oh, it was good. It was so good. But going around the corners, I was like, ah. It was good, though. Uh, I wish I could do a wheelie the whole way with like a drone flying through the trees. Oh, man. It's like total predator. Whoa, what was that? I don't know. But we are, uh, we're in the cut. Oh, yeah, we're in the cut. Uh oh. She oh, says wow, no. That's she a mean, mean old lady right there. That's like uh, that's like the Fratelli lady from the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, if we go back that way, we can go over that uh, one-way bridge. That might be pretty good. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Or totally lucked out today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we sure did. We sure did. We had no idea. This is the 55 rifle musket, which is the first um, issue rifle. I mean, we'd used other rifles. I mean, Mississippi was the first issue rifle, but this was the first one that could be loaded as fast as a smoothbore musket. Because mm. yeah. what you had to do in the old days was with the rifles, you had to patch it and force the ball down mm -hmm. into the grooves. This, the ball is slightly smaller than the bore and it's cupped out in the back. So when the musket charge fires, it blows those thin walls into the rifling. Yep. Ah. So, That's but as you can see, this thing came with a pretty good back sight. <laughs> yeah. That was a lot more proper for sure than what I thought maybe that fi uh, flathead was for. Yeah. Still the accuracy blows my mind. Like yeah. the, the, the ranges that, that these were able to achieve. Wow. I was telling them the sharpshooters could kill somebody at 750 a thousand yards out, no problem. That's, yeah, that's I mean, armed with a weapon similar to this, the uh, 53 Enfield rifle musket that the British used in the Crimean War, there was one regiment of British infantry, the 93rd Highlanders, who were being attacked by a brigade of Russian cavalry. Mm -hmm. And they had a couple of other odds and ends that they picked up and threw on the line. It's like 400 guys and they're going against like 1,200 cavalry. 
they opened up on them at 450 yards and it was like and they're like don't aim at the men aim at the horses yep and just like everybody in the front rank of the horses went down disrupt the formation they hit them again at about 250 yards and like a squadron of them kept coming and got within like 80 yards and they just slaughtered them wow wow so visiting this area really has a lot of a lot of weight uh, but in the right area you know we met a guy named skip who's a civil war reenactment actor and he's been carrying on that tradition tradition for many years and he was going back and forth and really explaining what it was like to be somebody involved in doing the reenactments and what it means to him and what he believes the significance of continuing that tradition on uh, is for the country and for understanding what these times really meant. So I can't believe, Skip, thank you. <laughs> we, we were doing a stunt show at a local dealership, uh, Twig Triumph here uh, in the local area. And by happenstance, Twig was in the stands and he watched us the day before and he recognized us while he was doing his reenactment. reenactment. Man, words are hard. And <laughs> and brought us back and showed us his collections. I mean, they were replicas, okay, but they were auth as authentic as you could get to a flintlock rifle. And let us play with, uh, play is the wrong, wrong term if you're into firearms, I'm sure somebody's gonna comment that play is not nice. If you're somebody that thinks you can't play with a rifle, even if it's a flintlock, go ahead and comment how stupid I am. But I got to play with the mechanism and really start to understand well, I mean, I, I had a grasp of what a flintlock was, but then I really, after tooling around with it, you know, got to put myself in the shoes of a rifleman back then. Man, it must have been heavy, you know. The, the weight these men carried that fought here is, is something else. There's not, I don't know if they make them like they used to, because damn, you know, this is, Yeah, this is significant. Anyways, you should come here. It's beautiful. Ride's great. Roads are great. People are friendly. Interesting. Really interesting to see uh, in one community a lot of, because there's a, an enclave just over the Potomac in West Virginia for uh, the LGBT community and they're celebrating Pride Month so there's flags everywhere and you just jump over the Potomac a little bit and you walk into a store with Confederate flags. And, you know, I'm a neutral fella, but I know the significance politically to some people and that's pretty wild. And to think also, most importantly, you know, one thing that I never really grasped is just how close to DC this is. It's just right around the corner. Wild history. Different men for sure, different times for sure. Um, but it was cool. We got to take it all in again. I say it all the time. The beauty of motorcycles. If I wouldn't have found motorcycles, I wouldn't be learning anything. Because if it wasn't for these things, I probably don't learn much. Why do I look so soft? It's like a glamour filter. I look good on that other camera. These are like Snapchat filters for GoPros. Anyway. Rad day, time to head west and we're gonna go hit some single track all day tomorrow and uh, go find these crazy looking Lord of the Rings tile forests. That supposedly, the fairy tale is, they were dropped by mountain trolls thousands of years ago. It's believable, yeah, trolls, mountain trolls, yeah. for sure. <laughs> I mean, cold. A little. It's not the ideal. Oh man. A couple of idiots as usual. Which it. choice do you got? I'm not gonna lie, look. I, I look like I got a jersey on, but really. 
I'm waterproof. And it doesn't stop there. I'm not gonna take my pants off for you, but you, you get the idea. It's there, it's, it's all there. It's nice to get Yeah, well, oh, it's hard to get on the bike with it. Take long. Barely starting. Already soaked. Oh, I'm dry. I'm dry because I'm wearing my knickers. <laughs> Look at this. Oh. We're all soaked. You got nothing on this. Oh, it don't matter to me. Look, and not only that, it, but wait, there's more. That's what happens when you're an old timer. Ooh. You can't tough it out like us young bucks. You gotta got, got go with it. Deep in the forest. The last pavement before we go that way. Snaggy Mountain Trail into the dirt. So damn green here. Here we go. I'd like to say as a, uh, as a Northwesterner, here in the Northeast, I feel like home. Uh, I'm ready, I'm waterproof. I got some, some of the high tech going on. Here we go. No, it's cool. It's real, real Lord of the Rings. The fern coverage is nice. For sure, we're definitely in the Shire. Well, it's crazy over there with those trees. Like going off in that would be sick. We have to find some single tracks. It, it's somewhere. That's the thing. Is I, I think what we got to do is because because the fire road's nice. I can't believe how manic it is. There's no potholes, no nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, no, I think what we need to do is just kind of jump off the beaten path and find whatever the because there's been some roads that let off. They were pretty developed, but they, they let off into the... Yeah, it was good. There okay. was one back there that was closed, and closed usually means that's where the fun's at. Probably. Oh, it's raining. It is raining. <laughs> I don't that know. That tastes not bad. Huh? It tastes not bad. Yeah, we're going for it, huh? I mean, it's... Yeah, it's there. I don't see anything that says you can't ride to it. Huh? You're right, I'm exhausted. I think that's a foot trail. But when you got these things, I don't know. Let me go, you want me to go 20 yards in and look, take a look? I, I mean, I say we just go for it or we don't. <laughs> it's, it's thick in there. You think we can do it? I mean, I've been off road for at least a good solid 30 minutes and I haven't crashed yet, so something's wrong. <laughs> oh yeah it's muddy and slippery for sure and i got a road tire but i think we go for it i think we go for it why not The reason we're looking at this 
is supposedly there's this like insane rock maze thing formation in the middle of the forest back there that's supposed to look like straight out of Lord of the Rings Schmeagel's home and that's the way to get there I got a poop oh he's got a poop he's got a poop he's got to make a poop I forgot to bring toilet paper oh it's okay you just use your underwear I'm not that type of dude there's some fur around you, you, here. You, you, you just. Oh, you know. You just use your underwear, dude, and you just leave it. Biodegradable, huh? You know who's the better dirt rider of the two of them? Definitely not me, but I'll take the lead. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know if I'm going to get it. That's a good start. <laughs> Man. What happened? You roosted the shit out of me. <laughs> you think so sideways, your camera? <laughs> 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 I can't. <laughs> oh, I did it to you. There you go, Cletus. Hold on. Hey, uh, Bob Slick. Let's lift it. A bike? No. I agree. Where do you want to go back then? Let's push the bike back in the tire. Well, we'd get over it fine if it wasn't for the fact it's so goddamn slick. No, it's super slick. Um, yeah, good. Oh shit, I already bent my brake lever on that rock. One more time. Oh shit. You got it? I got it. Yeah, I got the bike. It's just stuck on this other log. Yeah. Oh, the go for it though. No, it's good. Just roll back now. Pull it. Okay. So, <laughs> Huh? Well, if you go first, you got that front knobby, you know, all that extra grip and traction. The, the rear, there's nothing. I'm, I'm in the same boat you are. All the traction. Smoking. No, look, it's good. Just need some heat. We're trying to get some heat to tire so we can get some traction. I think this is king of the jungle right there. We wish we'd have had knobbies, but we got one on the front, but it does no good when the back can't help you out. So crazy. We're under the, all the trees, but it's still it's pouring. It hasn't lit up all day. It's just pouring. But this is the start of like these crazy rock formations. It's called the rock maze, rock maze trail, and it's just these crazy giant like boulders that are covered in like this green moss and the trees have just started growing into them and like around them. It's like this craziest looking thing. Oh wow, it's really raining now. Oh wow. I don't even know if you could see it in this, but it's pouring. Oh man. Natural umbrellas.
find what the hell is going on. Oh wow. Uh, damn monopod. <laughs> Fucking thing. What a weird thing. Nature's a this trip. Ride is worth it for sure. Although, yeah. Either do the hike. If you're on a if you're on an adventure touring bike, you gotta hike, and if it's in the rain, for sure. Unless you wanna get stuck like us, three quarters of the way up. Dude, this is so sick. We should try to bring the bikes in here. <laughs> There's a way. Nobbies. Damn, we keep it going. Like a homeless bag man. So this is called the rock maze. And the deeper we get into this, I'm beginning to see why. It feels like you're in like a crazy labyrinth. That's unreal. The fact, just the fact that the canopy covers the whole thing as well. Right. You feel like you're actually trapped inside. I mean, not trapped, but like you're in a hall. And that's it's a total maze, dude. Oh, look at this. I think I can make it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want to spark it through this. <laughs> Don't do it. I can't lift my legs high enough for my damn waterproof pants. <laughs> Oh, wow. I don't even know where we are. Ooh, what a wild ride. Snaggy Mountain Rock Maze didn't disappoint. Didn't think it was going to rain all day, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Time to head back to the hotel, dry up, and hit the road again tomorrow. Do on road or off road? I don't care as long as you get us a Frederick. We're here, uh, Maryland Barbara Fritchie Classic, oldest uh, flat track race in the country. And it's crazy, it just happened to be going on the same weekend that we were here. I heard Barbara's a spicy one. Yeah, supposedly she uh, gave the fingers, gave the finger no, it's single. Plural. It's plural. Is it? Maybe she gave two of them. Well, the story grows. The, the British. Time. I also think it was during the Civil War. I, I tried to Google the cost, I think it's the Civil War. I don't think it's Civil the War. But the story we got was that the British came to her home and she gave them the two finger salute. And that that's how Barbara Fritchie became quite popular. I also found later that she read a poem or something. I don't really know the story. It's all gonna be wrong, but we're here. E either way, Barbara, we can appreciate your spice. Cause we got this fine race out of it. Indeed. Uh, we like a spicy American. We like a spicy race. My favorite part about this race is it's it's a big race. It's been going on forever, tons of history. I, I believe it might be the oldest running flat track race in the United States. And it's a cool race being on the 4th of July, a lot of heritage here up in the Northeast. I don't know. I don't know what to say other than the fact that if you have 10 bucks and you can get this wristband that gets you your pit pass, you are in for one hell of a story because you can get this close. And when you're this close, you're really this close. Yeah, money well spent. Man, I don't know if I, I don't know if I filmed it. I might have turned the camera off, but I saw the whole thing. Son of a bitch, he went wide, clipped the fence, bike snapped in half. He was out cold. 
Oh man, what a crazy thing to see. Whew. Never like watching those things. Just glad he's okay, man. He's a tough kid. Just walk away with a, with a broken collarbone and uh, maybe a concussion. So for as gnarly as it was, man, that's, uh, that's about best case scenario there. So glad to see he's all right. I know uh, from the stories I heard of him, he's a, a strong, tough kid. He'll jump back on and uh, he'll be back out here in no time. But uh, some of the risks that we take, you know, when we're when we're pushing it on motorcycles, uh, it's kind of what happens, and it comes to the territory. So I'm sure he'll be uh, he'll be in the hospital bed like us all, just uh, asking the doctor how long it's gonna be before he can get back on and do the same thing. So same thing meaning racing, not not wrecking. We never want to wreck. But uh, I'm glad to hear he's okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, what a what a crazy thing to witness. Always just makes me wonder how many times I scared the hell out of people like I just got scared when I wrecked. So all in all. Hooligans are out, and uh, one of the guys is like 102 years old. One guy's playing with fire. He's just flying. He's on a BMW, and it sounds rad. He's fucking flying. I think it's the fastest bike here. Could be. Far. Well, he won the dash for cash. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's the real deal. And he's from Canada. In the U.S. on Independence Day, serving wreck to us Americans. And it's still a British colony. That bastard. Yeah, that guy. That guy's not playing around at all. I promised to get it to 100, but there's always skeptics out there that said, you didn't run in the Depression, you didn't run after World War II, you had COVID, you got to make it up. So we got a little drive. We're at 102 right now. How long are you going to keep this race going? Uh, we got to get it through the day. My knees have to hold out. And then I'll last for that next week. <laughs> All right. Who wants to do this race again next year on the 4th of July? How about some noise for Richard? Let him hear you. Well, for the first of 50, it was an interesting ride. A lot, lot to see, a lot to do here in Maryland. Uh, to be honest, other than knowing that Washington, uh, D.C. was here, and there must have been a bunch of history, which we saw, I didn't know much yeah. about the state. No, I mean, what, what a better way to end it, too. I mean, we went from seeing a rock maze in Oakland to running battlefield loops to ending at the oldest running flat track race in the country here in Frederick, Maryland. Like, can't, uh, can't say, can't get any better than that. Yeah. Uh, so big, big thanks to Ian and, and uh, the Riley family for taking care of us here at the race. And keeping the race alive, to be yeah, honest. I th it's them, that, it's them. They took the race over in 2013. Yeah. And they keep this piece of history going. Yeah. And to be honest, it's a great turnout, great people. It's a cool yeah. event. I mean, not just not just saved the race, but took out a second mortgage on their home to keep the, the race alive. Like, yeah. I mean, what you can't. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that for motorcycling. Like, if we had more people like them, motorcycling would be even better than it already is. So. Yeah. Well, I need a shower. It's hot in Maryland. I am sticky, but uh. <laughs> but yeah. It was it was definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Yeah. Until the next one.